Okay, so once again, I'm at work. Uh, this is a laptop here that a customer didn't want to pay. Uh, hey, I can see my reflection. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, customer didn't want to pay much to get it fixed. I gave them an option for a redneck repair. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you a redneck repair of this prom. You can see the screen somewhat flickered there for a second, then completely black. So even shining a light in it, there's nothing showing up on the back. It's stone dead. Uh, light comes on, fans come on. But in this case here, I'm just going to flick it off here. No point in leaving it running, killing the battery. So I just shut it down. I did start removing some screws out of it already. Then I decided I might as well make this video. Uh, cover the key. You can see how plugged solid that is. Like, holy crap. Like, try to focus in there. That is horrible. <laughs> so, turn on the light here. I can't even really see in there. From this side, it doesn't look that bad. But anyway, it's a Toshiba L300D. I have fixed probably close to at least, I'm going to say, 10 of these laptops for the exact same ROM uh, video chipset uh, being overheated. It's a very, very boring day. Uh, slow day, as you can tell, nothing going on in the computer. This computer here, I'm just browsing uh, YouTube and uh, playing on DX, looking up some new shit. Uh, front entrance to the store, I got another laptop on the go behind me, just doing updates. Nothing too, too major. Very, very slow day. I think today I may have had uh, five customers come in. <laughs> A couple uh, DVD players up on top there being repaired. So this one here, basically we got the desoldering, reflow gun, rework station, whatever you want to call it. But it actually died. So <laughs> I'm going to use the heat gun with a different attachment on it to kind of narrow the beam down to do the exact same thing. Uh, it will work fine. I have used the heat gun before. We are giving a customer warranty on the repair. I know this is not the proper way to do it. I should be using a re rework station. But uh, a buddy of mine was asking me how I can do this. It's the same way you repair almost any laptop, including Xboxes, Playstations, even video cards when they've been overheated. It's almost always the exact same repair, uh, the same way you do it. There's so many different ways that you could see people doing it by looking up uh, videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, but this here is just the way I do it. I have done it many, many different ways, including using, uh, well, I'll get more into it once I get it taken apart. Uh, and of course, if anyone doesn't like videos like this on my uh, page, just comment, because I know this has nothing to do with my YouTube page. Uh, but I just decided I might as well put it on there and see how many views I get. So, okay, I'll pull it apart. And once again, fan spin up, power light comes on, zero display, zero display with an external monitor and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so I'll show you how to fix it the redneck style way oh and I'm not going to show taking it apart because that's stupidly simple on almost any Toshiba any Acer basically you want to pull the motherboard completely out of the system so I'll start the video again once I get it out Okay, one more thing I thought I might as well mention that a lot of people have been having problems with their power jack. So you can see this one here is nice and tight. None of these side tabs are broken. But you always want to check that your wires here and here. Uh, like the top one here and the bottom one, so you're positive, you're negative. It's soldered on thoroughly. Uh, you can see this one here already has a form of epoxy on the wires. So not many of them have that. So... I have seen that this laptop has been taken apart before, but just thought I might as well mention that. A very good idea. Okay, so I got the board ready to come out uh, right now. It's all nice and loose. Uh, I got one screw, uh, two screws or whatever to remove, and then the whole board comes out. Uh, it only took me, no doubt, five minutes to get to this point. Uh, the screen, everything I'm leaving in, there's no point in removing all that. Uh, course check all your ribbons make sure none of them are pinched or anything uh, so yeah so I'm going to remove those two screws and then I'll uh, start the camera again once I get it removed the board
that is. Okay, so maybe 20 seconds later I got the board out. Uh, anyone that cares for the pin number, I know I'm shaking right now, but that's just because I'm uh, high on energy drinks. <laughs> so anyway, you can see how this one here has the, the glue around it to stop it from uh, moving under high heat, where this one here normally doesn't. So I can't wait to see how much dirt's in there, but just take a look at that fan. Like, holy crap. I wish I had a better camera because I had to set it up on a tripod and uh, fast forward and, you know what I mean, uh, make it so you can actually see the complete disassembly. Uh, make it a little bit easier for some people, I guess, trying to do this themselves. So, Okay, I know some people use anti-static guards and all that stuff, but I never had an issue without it. Uh, if it's a high-end motherboard or something like that, uh, I will bother, but in this case here, uh, the customer told us just to throw out the laptop, so that's why I'm just doing this just for the hell of it. So, okay. Okay, I had to hold my breath when I removed this fan, so just two screws holding it in. Uh, but here's the funny part. Look at that. That is super, super, super bad. It's one of the worst ones I've seen in a long time. Uh, just to show you how thick that is. That is my little finger. So you can see how bad that is. Uh, we actually had a customer come in before with his laptop and say his filter's dirty. And he wanted to know if we sold replacement filters for his exhaust on his laptop. And the filter, so-called filter that he brought in, uh, kind of looked like this. And he brought it in in a Ziploc bag. So that is not a filter. That is exactly what it looks like. Something that I don't want to breathe in. So first step is to clean everything and uh, next step will be to remove your heat sink and pay attention to the numbers for when reassembling and disassembling I guess. Okay so basically got the heat sink off. Uh, let's see pretty nice reflection in that chip. I wonder if that's showing up on the camera as good as I'm getting it. Oh look at that eh? Man it's a shiny chip. So what I am going to do now is the fact that this chip is actually already glued in place so it was overheated big time. Now you never know exactly where it overheated and what popped on it. So basically what I normally do with the reflow gun is you can actually get uh, special templates that cover the sides of the chip here. So just so you don't burn anything that you don't want to burn. But in this case here, I'm just going to take the heat gun directly to it. I'm not going to protect anything. I never ever had any problems with overheating any chips or popping any caps or micro caps or anything like that. Uh, or any fuses or anything like that. So, so yeah, I'm going to take the heat gun and I'm going to physically heat up this entire area. And even as high as this chip here. Uh, I am also going to solder off the battery. Just one lead. Uh, let it sit for a while and solder that back on, but I'm not going to videotape that. Uh, if you're ever soldering that battery, be very, very careful not to overheat your battery, or you might have a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> so, okay, and of course, I'm just doing it on a cardboard box. There is other devices you can use, but you want it perfectly level, because when you uh, rework the chip, you want it to sit 100% level back, and you do not want it to move. Just the whole point of what you're doing is heating up the little solder balls underneath it, which actually makes it recontact. Uh, and after that, basically, you can use copper. Sh Ooh, almost got kicked it on the ground there. She'll teach me for watching in camera. Anyway, uh, you can actually get different copper shims for on top of this. Uh, but in this case, the only reason why it failed is the fact that it uh, was overheated with dust. So it's not like it's a factory defect like some of the DV2000 HPs, DV6000s, 9000s have. Uh, so basically, this is what was in it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this uh, silicone conductive shit, whatever it's called, just with another pad. We got brand new pads of that. So I'm not going to bother probably using any copper shims or anything just because of the fact that it doesn't need it. 
and uh, yeah, I'll videotape as I'm doing it and when it's done. Okay, so here's the heat gun. It's a Power Fist Princess Auto brand, PA. 1500 watts. So this will get it up to 450 Celsius if I want to, uh, which will melt everything on there, no problem. Even burn some of the box. So basically, got my high, or my, that was my low, and this is my high, and I'm going to go slowly about an inch away until I smell burning pretty much and I'm gonna go oh my customer just came in so I'll have to stop and start it after that okay so you see how the glue on the sides actually changed colors that is actually overcooked uh, this one I did heat up a little bit too much but it's not going to do any damage whatsoever uh, I just had four customers in a row <laughs> So now this is about half an hour later. It's nice and ice cold, ready for reassembly. So basically, I'm not going to turn this on. You don't want too much airflow because uh, if something really heats up, you can actually watch one of your little chips uh, fly and move. If you do see that, heat it up and just tap it back. But normally that doesn't happen. But pretty much, uh, I was about that far away. And I was going in a, a pattern kind of like this. And I kind of actually moved it around to some of the other stuff. Now what you want to watch for is anything like your Ethernet port here. You want to make sure you don't melt that. Uh, same with your USB ports. You don't want to melt any of them. And you just want to go over the whole thing. So now I'm going to put some new thermal grease. New thermal pad. And I'm going to reassemble the heat sink. And believe it or not, uh, I don't use this almost ever I have done a few of them just as a backup like this because uh, our reflow gun there uh, has kicked like it's dead so it has been used far too many times well over a hundred times <laughs> so it's uh, time to replace the gun the wand on it uh, so I'm going to reassemble everything here and again I normally do not recommend using a heat gun but this is a redneck style video that is something that someone could do from home you don't have to spend $300 or more buying a, a rework station, reflow station. You don't have to buy any of the metal templates uh, to cover anything here. You can just do it the way I did. Uh, once again, some people use cardboard to go around everything here uh, with a cutout, just so you only heat up this chip and you don't heat up everything else. Uh, but really, if you heat up everything else, uh, I have never had an issue where it did any damage. I have done tons and tons of these. Uh, with the reflow station, I do have different templates so and different ends, so I can actually get the heat exactly where I want it. Uh, same with this uh, heat gun. I do have different cones on here. Ooh, that's actually still a bit warm. I do have different cones that I could have coned it right down, uh, but I never used them. So, uh, again, it would have been better if I would have, but I didn't want to dig, try to find them. So what I'm going to do now is reassemble this and give it a try. And it's going to work, because I know it's going to work, because I have done too many of them and have never had one well actually I had one not work after but that's because uh, there was other issues with the board but okay okay so it's done so I'll put back together uh, I got a little bit of busy in between uh, so what I'm going to do now is put in the battery and I'm going to try it so this is the first time plugging it in so it's either going to go up and smoke or it's going to work great <laughs> it never goes up in smoke. I'm just joking about that part. So, a second. Oh, we got light. There we go. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install Speed Fan. Uh, there's also a bunch of other tools on the Hiren's Boot CD that you can install uh, just to monitor the temperature, everything like that. Uh, I always let them, I always run a uh, CPU uh, load test on it. So, uh, burn-in test, I guess you could call it. So I always run that on them for at least an hour. Uh, multiple different tests, stuff like that. Uh, just to make sure everything's good. I do hear the fan, so I know the fan's working, but that's the first thing you always want to check, make sure your fan's working. Uh, in this case, I can hear it. So, uh, they did say they had some problems with the operating system with some viruses and a few other things that I'm going to take a look at. 
Uh, total job uh, took uh, exactly one can of Diet Coke and maybe uh, an hour and ten minutes at the most. So, but the thing is, there's still a few other things I'm going to run at, on it. I want to make sure it's not going to run too hot. So I want to monitor the temperature. So by the time I'm done, the complete job an hour and a half. So, and uh, I'm not going to show that just because I don't want to get their login name on there. Uh, but anyway, I'll start the test once I get, uh, well, I'll start the video once I get the load test on to show what kind of temperatures it's going to run at. Okay. And just thought I'd put this as the name of the software I use. You can download it from, cover my hidden favorites there. Uh, it's not even going to focus. There you go. Okay, so this computer has been doing Windows updates and a few other things now for almost, just sitting on the bench, not physical labor, for almost two hours now. Everyone knows how long it takes to do updates on Vista. Their antivirus was expired. They had an outdated driver. So many, so many issues with this computer, which all of them I'm doing for free. So I'm just doing a general tune-up, pretty much everything. Uh, so... Labor-wise, probably about two hours into the laptop altogether. It's running very nice. I did have the temperature program running. Uh, everything was within spec. Everything was fine. Uh, did a little bit of stress testing. Uh, no issues whatsoever, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Uh, technically, today is the next day. I left it on overnight. Uh, you can hear the dogs barking in the background, but whatever. Uh... Holy crap, noisy dogs. But anyway, it's done. That's where I'm going to leave this. It's the next day. I just left it on overnight, like I said. Everything's working great. Customers called. They're extremely happy. Hopefully they have no other issues with it. If they do, I'll fix it again. <laughs> so 90-day warranty is what I'm giving them. I don't think they'll have any issue whatsoever. Hope not. Oop, covered her desktop there. But it's done. Sweet.